Hello, everyone. This is David Blaine coming to you with the market and coronavirus update. First of all, I want to make sure that uh, we start off by wishing everyone the best of health. I hope that so far, none of you listening to this video, none of our clients, families, friends, have been affected by the coronavirus. That's the first thing I wanted to do, was just say we're thinking about you. Hopefully, um, everyone is staying safe. Along those lines, many of you may not know, but I'm actually the vice chairman of the Carolina East Health System. It's a large health system in North Carolina. And so I've been attending a number of briefings, uh, board meetings, and other things related to this um, health crisis. And I just wanted to pass along a few of those things. Obviously, the health concern, washing your hands, staying away if you're sick, staying home, all those typical things that you've heard everywhere. I hope you're able to practice those. The thing I kind of wanted to mention today was that for most people, this particular virus is not uh, deadly. Um, for certain people at risk, it is. The biggest risk involved is overwhelming the healthcare system. And so while I'm not a, a medical doctor, I am involved in health care. And so I just wanted to pass along a few things to you. Number one is if you are feeling sick, please call your doctor. Uh, do not just show up the emergency room or your doctor's office. Uh, if you call in and let them know, you know, that you have symptoms of, you know, they'll walk you through it. Um, most places are ramping up their telemedicine capability. And if you do need to be treated, um, I know in a lot of places, the health departments are equipped to actually come out and visit you, uh, bring a test to your location. Or if you do have to come in, typically, uh, they're meeting patients, um, you know, by a side door or a special entrance set up to accommodate someone with this type of illness. So just wanted to pass that along. Um, if you can, call ahead. Uh, let them know that, that you may be experiencing symptoms, and then they'll guide you as to what, um, what to do. That's the biggest risk of this is that we overwhelm our health systems with people that don't need to be uh, hospitalized. Uh, number two, I want to, of course, talk about what's going on in the markets today. Um, Thursday, March the 12th, was another really big down day. Markets declining, you know, 7 8%. Um, it's been a really awful week. Uh, we're fully into bear market territory. Um, a lot of this is based on the uncertainty. People don't know what to make of the coronavirus. They don't know what to make of travel bans. They don't know what to make of canceled. NCAA basketball tournaments, the NHL, I'm a big hockey fan, you know, the NHL season, get ready for playoffs has, has been canceled, NBA canceled, my kids soccer league just sent me a text, you know, everything is canceled. And so people are really uncertain as to what is going on, what the impacts of this are. Um, and that's what's causing a bit of a panic. Um, that just to kind of refresh everybody, when you invest in this, you know, what is the stock market? When you invest in the stock market, you own a piece of the company. Um, if you have invested in one, say Apple, you own a piece of that company. Uh, if you're a client of Blue Sky, we don't recommend individual companies, thank goodness. I hate to be, if you were invested in directly in Disney or a cruise line or an airline, or even the tech companies are really getting uh, pretty good shellacking right now. But anyway, so if you own an ETF or mutual fund like we recommend, you are a part owner of literally thousands of companies um, here in the United States and around the world. And the reason you invest in those companies is that uh, they all make a product or sell a service or something, and they, they sell it to the public. And the hope is that they can run the company well and that people want their product or service. And then you as the shareholder uh, make a return on that. And your return comes in two forms. Number one is the dividends that the company may pay, actual cash that's paid out to you, typically on a quarterly basis based on the earnings. Although it's not directly tied to the earnings, the board of directors votes and they declare a dividend. They'll say, oh, we're going to pay a dollar a share or 50 cents a share or something like that. And so even when a company loses money, the board of directors can still pay out a dividend. This happens all the time. Um, in severe recessions or severe economic declines, yes, the board of directors of that company may elect to suspend or reduce the dividend. Um, so there is a risk of that. But that's the first way that you make money is the dividend payments. 
And they're not going to stop just because of one bad quarter. Um, most companies are going to have a reserve, your larger companies. The second way that you make money investing in stocks is as the company makes money over a number of years, the value of that company goes up. Um, the earning potential of that company as it grows, uh, the, the price of that company becomes more valuable and the share price goes up. And presumably at some point, if you need to, you sell it and you reap that higher, higher price. Historically, um, the majority of the return is going to come from the dividend return. Uh, the growth in the share price is an important uh, component of it, but it's generally tied to the growth in the economy and inflation. So if you take the average growth in the economy, which is somewhere around one and a half, maybe 2% for a mature economy, um, and then you add in inflation, a couple of percentage for inflation, that is the growth that you're going to get plus some dividend yield. That's how you compute an average stock return. The past decade, we've had really unusually high stock returns. That's after the prior decade was really unusually low. But that's how you make money uh, investing in stocks, the dividends and then the appreciation and the price. And so what's happening right now is people, instead of focusing on um, you know, Apple making money over the next five or 10 years or um, you know, American Airlines continuing to be in business five or 10 years from now, people are looking at like, what's happening next month? Uh, what's happening next quarter? And they're sort of panicking and realizing that their earnings may be lower. And so people are selling off the stocks. It's a very simple explanation. So many people make it overly complicated. Uh, some big mystery black box. It's not Las Vegas. It's not a black box. It's very simple that the stock price is a reflection of the earning potential and the dividends paid of that company. And right now with the economic uncertainty, people are thinking that companies in aggregate are worth less than they were a couple weeks ago. They probably are a little bit, but not significantly on the, on the course that, that they're on right now. The other thing I wanted to mention is this is somewhat normal. Each bear market, has its own very unique thing. So I started investing um, in the late 1980s. One of my first investing experience was the crash of 1987. Of course, Blue Sky was founded in 1999. So we went through the recession of 2000, 2001, the Y2K, the World Trade Center bombing, uh, and then of course, 2008 and nine, the financial crisis. So this one, the coronavirus, which has caused a, a bear market, one of its hallmark is the speed at which it declined. You know, 07, 08, 09 was the financial crisis. Um, 2000 was the Y2K. And then shortly after that, the, the uh, terrorist attack on the Trade Center and Pentagon caused that decline. You know, in the 70s, the bear market um, was an oil, was an energy related bear market. So each bear market has its own little thing that makes it somewhat unique. But the reality is it's a normal part of investing. And if you're going to invest in companies, you're going to have to endure the, the occasional panic. Now, everyone at Blue Sky almost, I'd say 98% of the clients, there are a few people that are invested 100% in stocks. But for the most part, all of you have some sort of fixed income or bonds in your portfolio. And so far, they're reacting very well, especially government uh, high quality government bonds. And so that's why we remain diversified. Um, I don't enjoy going through these bear markets. Um, I would much rather be doing something else than, than worrying about it um, and, and looking at it. But the reality is it's part of investing. I've been through this before. Uh, each one is a little bit unique, but have confidence in knowing that this too will end. The coronavirus will end. There's nobody that's predicting that it will be like the, the next black plague that's going to wipe out 40% of the global population. And no one is predicting that it will collapse the entire global economy. Sure, it's going to make some disruptions. There are some positive things. Here in North Carolina, I went to buy gas um, last night, and I paid $1.87 a gallon. Um, and so gas prices have come down a lot. Um, almost everything is made with petroleum, you know, plastics and all sorts of different things. And so the decline in the price of oil is very bad for the, the, the companies that are in that industry that need to make a profit, but that too will, will sort it out.
Um, the other thing that I think is positive about this is it will cause companies to rethink their supply chain. Should we really have all of our manufacturing in China? Not just China, but even within these manufacturing hubs within within the country. So I think you're going to see a, a benefit, you know, here in the U.S., possibly uh, onshoring some additional manufacturing, certainly a diversification of the global manufacturing base. I mean, one of the things that came to light is, you know, where are all our surgical mat or our, um, you know, virus masks and protective gear? The most of, most of it's made in China, at factories that are shut down. So I think there will be some definite changes in the global supply chain coming out of, out of this. Uh, what to expect? I would not expect this to end um, over the weekend. <laughs> you know, the coronavirus is gonna take a, take a while for it to play out. It's gonna take a while for vaccines to be created, for treatments. Um, you know, the coronavirus is part of the same um, type of virus that caused the common cold. Um, you know, people forget the swine flu. I mean, the swine flu killed tens of thousands of people um, and affected all kinds, millions of people in the United States uh, a few years ago. People forget about that. Um, and so I have confidence, you know, we have the finest medical system in the world here in the United States to, if you do get sick, you'll get the best treatment possible. And I have confidence that we will come up with the, to the best of our ability the ability to deal with this, um, this particular virus. Um, but I would expect it, the volatility in the markets to continue. You overlay that on top of all the political nonsense that's going on and people politicizing this um, and, and, and the election coming up. You're going to see a lot of volatility continuing from now for, for quite a while. It's not going to get resolved. You know, it wouldn't surprise me at all if the markets continued to go down. So you may be saying, well, why don't, why don't we just sell everything? Um, history has proven time and time again that that is a bad strategy, that trying to time the market and get out and then pick a point to get in, because I can guarantee you just as fast as things have gone down, they're going to go back up at some point, and you're not going to be able to predict when it, when it is. Now, hopefully, uh, We've done our planning right, which I, I'm confident that we have. We have the tools when we design your investment strategy and figure out how much money you can spend and what to invest in. We have all sorts of tools at our disposal, and we, we know these bear markets happen, and that's I can't emphasize that enough. We know this stuff happens. We plan for it. We simulate it. We stress test your portfolios to make sure that you can withstand this. If you're younger and you're not, this is a great opportunity to be a buyer. Uh, now we want to be very thoughtful about what we buy. Um, we want to be very deliberate about what we buy. As I like to say, no sense trying to catch a falling knife. Um, but if you do have money, a rational strategy to go ahead and let's get it to work. Uh, we are aggressively rebalancing, taking tax loss harvesting opportunities as they present themselves. Uh, we are going to be making some small changes. Like today, we uh, exited a position in our bank loan. It's a fixed income. It's not a stock. It's a fixed income, but it wasn't providing us protection that, that we wanted. Um, and so we went ahead and exited that. And we'll continue to make uh, adjustments in the portfolio as we see as we see fit. What you're not going to see is if your normal allocation is 60% stock, you're not going to wake up one day and have 0%. All of you have an investment policy statement with a range. It's not a huge range, but it is a, a range of a high and a low water mark. And so we'll, we'll make some judgment calls based on, um, on where the markets are, your particular situation to, to make adjustments within that. But you're not going to see any panic adjustments from Blue Sky. We looked at it as this is an opportunity um, to take advantage of other people panicking. As Warren Buffett says, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. So we may not be greedy when others are fearful, but we're certainly not going to be fearful of, of this bear market because it's part of investing. It's something that we've been through um, before. As always, if you have any questions, please, please reach out to uh, your advisory team, to me, to anyone, to your advisors, and we'll be happy to take the time to walk you through this. Um, look at your plans, make sure they're, they're on track. 
Um, and I will continue to, uh, the most efficient way for me to get the information out is through these videos. So I'll continue to make these videos throughout this bear market. Um, we'll also have them transcribed and we'll, we'll send them out uh, by email. They'll be posted on our website. Um, the most important thing I think is that people understand what is going on. Um, and through that, hopefully, at least on the investment side, we can help to calm uh, the situation down a little bit. Okay, so we'll be uh, back in touch here as, as things develop, and I hope uh, you are able to enjoy the upcoming weekend.